Hello, everybody. So we're going to be talking about Maxwell's relations right now. And um, I'll just sort of give you like a sort of like a quick introduction to Maxwell's relations. Maxwell's relations, um, let me use a different color. I like using that for, for formulas. Maxwell's relations basically say, just spell like this, Maxwell's relations. And they allow us to relate um, certain uh, properties of state to other properties of state and, 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 and differentials and derivatives and things. This is why I said sort of partial derivatives are going to come into play. Um, basically, what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to start off with our fundamental equation, okay? DU, fundamental first law and second law combined equation. DU is equal to TDS minus PDV. Now, Maxwell's relations were really hard for me to grasp at first until I realized they're doing something I call like a flip-flop method. So we're going to just remember sort of this motion, okay? This is what we're going to end up doing, and it makes it really easy to sort of figure out the Maxwell's relations. So what I'm going to do is, to get one Maxwell relation, I'm going to say that the partial derivative, I'm going to say that del t, I'm going to take the front variable here and look at the back variable here, okay? So I'm going to say that del t, front variable, del v, back variable, at constant, so I'm flip-flopping, right? I go here, front, back, that's back also. So we're going to go here, then here, then I'm going to say at constant s, okay? So I go from 1 to 2 to 1, from term 1 to term 2 to term 1, right? And because I started on the front, I'm going to say that that's equal to front, then back, then back. So two, then one, then two, okay? So I'm gonna say that that's equal to, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna say negative del P over del S because I'm taking the front variable from here, coming to the back variable here, then coming back to this back variable, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this negative out of the whole um, partial differential. That's why I wrote the negative there at first, but I wanted you to see where that came from. So that becomes negative del P del S at constant V, okay? Now, that's your first Maxwell equation, or relation. Now, I haven't checked to see if this is right, but I'm pretty confident this is right. Simply because of this method, front then back then front, or front then back then back, but one then two then one, okay? And um, I'm hoping this sort of makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this Maxwell's relation right here, just so that we can see like how many like we're gonna get out of this simple equation. There we go, that's our first Maxwell relation, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, you can also use the back variables, okay? So, I'm going to start off with a back variable first this time, then go to a front variable, then a back variable. I'm sure you can sort of see where this is going. So, um, back variable. I'm going to say that del S, then this is going to be negative del P, right? So, I'm just going to say del P, and I'm going to bring this negative outside, right? So, I went to the back variable and the front variable. I went to the back variable on the first term, then the front variable on the second term, okay? At constant s, then back to the back variable on the first term. So del s, del p, I'm sorry, the first variable on the first term because I already used this variable because you can't have del s at constant s, right? Basically, this here is saying that we're holding that constant. So I'm looking at the change in s with respect to the change in p at constant s, and this is a negative right here, okay? But that's not correct because you're not going to use the same variable when you're doing a Maxwell equation Maxwell relation I like saying Maxwell equation but that's going to be a constant t instead okay cool then I'm going to equate that to the back variable here over the front variable with respect to this where or with a, a constant this rather let me say that so um I'm going to say the del v del t at constant 
constant. Hmm. Now this is sort of tripping me up. Constant uh negative p. I'm just gonna go ahead and write constant v. I'm taking a gamble here, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. If it's not correct, you're not even gonna see this video because it's I'm not gonna upload it. But basically, I'm gonna go ahead and write a constant p. I guess theoretically it could be a constant negative p, but um. Constant negative P and constant P are basically the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and write a constant P. So this is the second Maxwell equation, Maxwell relation that we get from this. Um, so these, well, we got two Maxwell relations out of this simple formula. Now, what do these Maxwell relations tell me? Sort of like, um, now, we know how to keep something at constant pressure. We know how to keep something at a uh, constant temperature. Now, how do I look at the change in entropy with respect to P, with the, respect to the change in pressure? I don't know. Maybe it, it might be easier to do that than to do this, but I can look at the change in volume with respect to the change in temperature also. What I'm basically trying to say is like, some of these things are easier to find than others. So let me say that this were easier to find than this. If I knew that this was equal to this, right, and I had to find this, I could easily use this to find the value of this. Granted, I'm not looking at the change in volume with respect to the change in temperature at constant pressure. When I look at the change in entropy, the negative change in entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. But those two values are going to be the same. That's what I'm trying to say here. So that's why Maxwell's relations are, um, are uh, valuable. Um, I'm going to look for a better way to sort of describe this than my flip-flop method. Um, hopefully, that's a good mnemonic for you to use. But I think you can also use this describing like, like del U, del S, at, at, at constant P, things like that. But uh, basically, we'll get into all of that. But I hope you were sort of able to grab something from this. Um, if, you don't have any, if, you don't, if you have some questions and you sort of didn't understand anything I said, feel free to comment in the comment section. Um, let's keep learning thermal. All right, bye-bye.